Welcome back, guys, here at the Spend Star League. We just had one really fast series. Nyungsik just did not want to stay in that one against Dream, got O2. Will go down a loser's match. Dream will go up. Now we got our second match of the night. Now, Rain versus Deer should be a really interesting one. I feel like a lot of people would favor Rain highly going into this matchup, but I feel like it could be really even. I think that uh, I'm serious. Now look at these yeah. look at these win rates between these two. Look at Rain's recent PvPs. Two and five versus eleven and seven. Deer has been fielded a lot in Pro League. He's a lot more PvP experience overall. Now, he has lost some terrible PPs with like some really split second bad decisions. The maps, by the way, Expedition Lost, Terraform, and Cactus. Uh, you mentioned they go away really fast, so I want to mention that really quick. Um, but I feel like Deer could absolutely pull an upset here. Um, and I know this is a controversial topic. I'm gonna say it. I feel like Rain's GSL win was one of the one of the easier runs of GSL there's ever been. Like he beat Bjell in the finals, and Bjell definitely looking strong. But when you look at Rain versus Bjell, even in the finals, it's like. Did Bjell live up to the hype? Did he live up to the finals? Like, not really. He didn't show up. It's like when, like, just before Classic destroyed him in Star League, and then Rain mm. wins against this guy who's, like, defeated as a person almost, like, during this time. And it's, it does, it's, it's still a GSL title. It's like a real GSL title, and GSL is one of the hardest tournaments in the world, along with Star League. He beat a bunch of really great players to get up there in the first place. There were some, I mean, there were some great upsets. He did beat yeah. some really good players. I mean, players. you think about, like, even Mar versus Dream, their finals. Like, Dream did not show up. He didn't show up against Classic either. Like, he just kind of fell over. That happens a lot in finals, but at the end of the day, he's still a very good player, will win. I think I think Rain is an incredible player. In fact, probably like top four Protoss. Why, I just say don't sleep on Deer here going into this PvP. I think he absolutely could take it. Totally feasible. Like, I'm 50-50 I'm on this one, Valdez. Whoa. Well, that's definitely controversial, Wolf. We'll see if it works out for you. I'm definitely pulling for Rain here. I think uh, just those seven games don't really speak to how good this player really is. And uh, I don't know, Deer never really impresses me too much overall. Very inconsistent, uh, definitely not where he once was in his career. Uh, still searching for that. He's got his pin on his jersey. We'll see if that helps him out. No GSL pin though. Where is it at? Get your, bring your GSL pins, you two. Yeah. Two GSL champions. Two GSL pin, you wear it. Yeah, two Dude. GSL champions fighting each other right now, Valdez. Yeah. If where you have a Cup pin, uh, pin, you wear that too. Neither of these guys have those. Listen, if yet, I were a GSL champion, I'd wear it to the restaurant. I'd wear it outside. wear it to the gym. Uh, just put it on your skin. Anyway, guys, jumping at game number one now on Expedition Lost. Push it. Push it. Push it. Push it. Push it. Push it. In the top right in the red from Samsung Galaxy Con is Deer. He has a really cool logo. The Samurai Tuss. His opponent, the only player on a foreign team to ever win a GSL. It's Rain from My Insanity. Now his, uh, his pin and his um, little uh, tagline sort of thing is yes or no. And it basically refers to whether or not he shows the fans an exciting game or a boring macro game, because he can do both. Um, he was more known for the more sort of mar uh, macro-oriented games. We called him the Archangel Pro for a while because it was like, he was like, there will never be cheese. I will be the protector of the macro, and I will only do late game, I and I will have two forges. the sanctity of this game. Yeah. But, uh, you know, in recent times, he's changed it up quite a lot, which I feel like gives him that yes-no sort of like, you know, is he aggressive or is he defensive sort of um, tagline there. And I think that's a really cool and very appropriate uh, sort of logo for him here. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I hate to keep referencing poker. I'm studying it a bunch these days, but it, it's like when a player plays very tight. You know, they only play with the best cards usually. But then all of a sudden they start playing really loose. It, it really throws you off. And I think that's the reason why Rain did it. It's because everybody's like, this guy's not going to cheese me. I'm not scouting at all. And then he just cheeses you a bunch and he gets free wins. Even though he's a really good player, he's going against his image and he's winning because of it. Yeah. So. I remember one time in Pro League last year, Rain was on SKT. Uh, he like proxied six gates and did like a seven yeah. gate all in and a PVT. And so it's like no one is ever going to expect Rain to do that. That was almost like the beginning 
of his uh, resurgence yeah. to aggro. He was the guy that would always make like five, six, seven observers and just never not see anything. Yeah. Well, this is a Protoss versus Protoss. Totally different beast. There are different ways you can be aggressive early on, but this is more of a mind game oriented matchup. Aggression is something that definitely can come into it. <laughs> 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 oh, that is so funny. Oh, I want to see the face of the person who made that sign. It's down there in the bottom right, I see him. Oh, that's far and fan. Shout out to that guy. Shout out to that guy. You are clever, sir. I wish we saw more uh, <laughs> more kinds of, um, what do they call it, cheerfuls like that, actually. Stuff like this from Pro123BE. Pro123, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. The king of uh, Protoss, the king of macro. Let's see how he does today. It's going to be Stargate for Rain and Twilight for Deer. Kind of what you'd expect to see out of these two, to be honest, I'd say. Yeah, kind of makes sense. Uh, by the way, there was a hidden pylon that uh, I'm not sure if Deer actually saw that, but it might have thrown him for a loop, might have you know, made him scout a little bit more on the map. But you're going to see Rain work on these rocks. Which is going to slow down any sort of direct pressure that Deer can put on with the Stalkers. Give them less angles to work from. Ooh, very quick Nexus here. Versus a Dark Shrine. And Dark Shrine is obviously going to be quite good against a Phoenix build, which is going to be the case here. Rain needs to start a Robo. I think he's saving for it right now. He has to make yep, one. That is the follow-up here. And uh, with the Phoenixes, he is going to gain a lot of map control. He will keep Deer on his side of the map for a long time. Also, though, Deer is going to go for his own Nexus. Uh, the DT build kind of similar in a way, just in the fact that it will get you a lot of map control, keep your opponent on his side of the map, and allow you that room to go for the Nexus. And one of the sad things for Rain in this game is uh, he's using these Phoenixes insanely defensively against potentially Oracles. It looks like that's what he's expecting based on this position. He's going to see this fake Oracle in a moment, but he doesn't scout with them, so he's not going to know about the DTs. He doesn't have a Sentry in position to block the ramp, so DTs could come in and do a lot of damage. The timing here is going to line up for his first Observer to pop up very shortly after the DTs arrive, if not right before. And the DTs need to do damage, or Deer will essentially lose this game just simply because he will not be able to keep up. Oh, wow, the pile on the spot, that's going to make it a lot easier to defend. Yeah. He's and already immediately, transitioning. Yeah, immediately Blink is coming out here. Only one DT going to be made. He may and just even take the Watchtower or something. He has to go around the rocks. He has to go all the way around the rocks. And Rain does not see that DT, but doesn't matter. By the time it arrives, the Observer will be gone, so that's a one plus he's got here. But the Phoenixes are going to totally control the map and give him all sorts of vision, all sorts of information. He's getting a faster Immortal as well. I feel like if this DT doesn't do damage at all, I mean, already Rain is massively ahead. This DT needs to catch him up. And oh, look at this. The Observer's perfectly in position. This is going to do less than no damage. Less than none. How is that even possible? Because he spent money on the DT. Cost Whoa. him money. Now he's even going to lose it to a Phoenix? Oh, no! Well, that's definitely less than no damage. I suppose you can say goodbye, DT. He's like, well, at least I made him use one Phoenix lift. <laughs> yeah, paying energy just to kill that. But yeah, I mean, Rain in a great position. He uh, gets out the first Immortal a bit quicker. He's going to have the early Robotics Bay. And, Blink, uh, what? Blink is worthless here, right? Like, he stopped at two Phoenixes, and, and like, Deer was expecting a bigger commitment to Phoenixes, so he rushed that Blink out afterwards. It's just totally worthless. Even these Phoenix is going to get a bit of damage. Um, I thought Deer was making a Robo. Uh, he I is, is he now. I, he may have, but I wasn't. I didn't notice it before. If he was, but um, yeah, the spits rain even farther ahead. Yeah, I mean, I like, mean, how much further ahead could he be? Like the forge is further ahead. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, he's that much further ahead. Like build order wise, Rain's build is just better. It's just. It's just more solid. It's not based around a gimmick, which is how Deer's build is looking. And um, I worry for Deer going into this three Protoss group if he's approaching the group this way. Look at how far behind his bay is. Mm -hmm. Look at the, the supplies even. The worker count is the only thing he's ahead in, but only by one. Yeah, it's funny that even happens as well uh, because Rain got his Nexus a bit quicker. But regardless, I mean, Rain's going to get slightly more mining time from that. Yeah, I mean, he's got double Immortal now in his composition. He's going to start those Colossi before Deer will. Just getting further and further ahead. Like, the Blink is just, again, totally worthless in this case. 
What is he going to accomplish with that? Six stalkers. Yeah, really, only he could hope to accomplish is maybe some harass damage. Maybe if he goes like for an absurd amount of stalkers, he could try to blink on Colossi before there's too many. But I mean, if we want to break this down to like, and he is going to make more and more stalkers. This is this is something that could work. But I was I was just going to say, it's almost something he could break down to like. The only advantage he gets from having that Twilight Council is he might get plus two faster, but he probably still won't, <laughs> based on how late his plus one is. Yeah. Like, how much damage can he really hope to get here with this ragtag group of stalkers that's... I mean, there's... The biggest thing about this is, even if there was only one Colossus, you still probably couldn't find that much damage, but there's two Immortals down there as well. So all these stalkers are just going to get... They're just going to get pummeled if they try to blink on this. Oh, and even scouted as well. See you later. Smell you later, even. Mm. Stalkers are really smelly. Yeah. And uh, Ring getting a nice little scout there on the timing of the third base, getting his own third base at the same time. He's playing very defensive and uh, playing well, very well. More and more Stalkers being worked in for Deer. The heavy Stalker comp. 12 Stalkers now. Yeah, don't usually see this doing too well. It, the only way that this does well is if, like, he's able to get into the main base undetected or something and start doing some real damage and then escaping and doing it, like, three times. And, uh, he's got two warping points on both sides of the map now. One gets scouted and actually might get removed here. The Stalkers actually cannot be here. And they, they just, just blinked. blinked. They wow. just blinked. They can't blink away. Two of them go down. Another one very low. And he's slowly pushing up here. I think he's realized at this point he's just got a better army and he can punish. And what is this move out here from Deer? It just simply doesn't make sense. He already saw the army was better. Well, They're now he's going to try to force it. Even a DT here in the mix. Okay, well, if he can actually take out these Immortals quickly. Now, nah, look at this. Even the Phoenix is coming in. One Colossus goes down. He will force this back. DT but here dies, the you can hear it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe he was going for an Observer Snipe with this many uh, Stalkers, but he doesn't really find it. His range is about to finish. He's going to lose his Mothership Core, but he already killed his opponents. And he might be able to, oh, he almost got one Colossus shot off there, but he misses it and costs him a Stalker and a half. He needs to warp in a DT. There's no Observers right now for Ain. Yeah, this would be a great opportunity. I don't know if he realizes it. He's going to try to go for the Colossus from behind. Oh, no, going to go for Reinforcements. This is an interesting choice. But he's going to lose his third Nexus for it, for sure. But for a lot of Zealots, and already Rain's third base is not being used. And I think he's sending a DT over there right now. Yeah, and look at this. I mean, no Mothership Core for either player. So he's going to have to run all the way back home if he wants to uh, try to defend against this. This is a great opportunity for Deer. Okay, here comes that first DT. He's going all the way into the main base. There's a cannon at the natural, and in the main base there is a cannon as well. He's just going to try to find some angle over here next to the assimilator. Meanwhile, there's a small skirmish over here killing more zealots. Yeah, more zealots. He's going to get a lot of damage here before Rain can get back home. Rain looks like a, a deer in the headlights, man. No pun intended, but look at his army. His own rocks are stopping him, and now the Colossi <laughs> are coming the wrong way. If he realizes this, he can punish this so hard. Now he's going to kill his cannon here so his DTs can continue to do damage. There's no detection. He needs to actually kill his Colossus and blink away through the main base. He's taking a lot of damage here. We'll see what that DT can get done. If Rain realizes it and tries to Carnivus out an Observer, yes, he does have it, and it will go down. Okay, that was a lot of damage done there. He didn't escape. He stayed a bit too long. Now Rain's going to have charge and plus two much faster. And he still has... He's got one more Colossus than his opponent. The game ends up being fairly even. It's just the biggest concern I feel is that he's going to have charge plus two in a third base. And how is Deer now going to do damage with his stalker count now reduced to three? Yeah. I think both of the Immortals did go down. Yes. Yeah. So he does lose that from his army composition, Rain does. Um, but as you said, he is going to have the charge plus two. He's going to have all the upgrades here. He's even adding some Archons in now with the Templar Archives. Does he actually have two Templar Archives? Uh, yes, he does. Whoa. Oops. Bit of pressure here felt by Rain. We've seen it before. We have seen this before. It happens. Oh, look at that sick DT defense of that pylon. <laughs> going to be able to harass later. No, thank you, Azeli. Get out of here. How many zealots has he killed this game? So many. That's the answer. I think probably like 15 <laughs> or something, man. Okay, small little blink harass. Like, snipes the Temple Archives, but there's a second one. He's like, oh. It's <laughs> the perfect amount here. You go for four, you can one-shot uh, a probe. You can kill a cannon as well. It looks like he just wants to go for those probes, like you said. Oh, can I get this warp prison, perhaps? Uh, it's not good to commit to this, though. I yeah, you can't quite get it. Can I just get a pylon? Force a defensive warp in here. With good micro, you can actually kill 
One of these zealots, probably. Rain is, like, not reacting to this. He's got his entire army on the right side of the map. Okay. This is a tough engagement for Rain to take. I don't think he should try to fight this. Just The funny thing about this is Rain is just not saturating his third base. He's 10 probes down right now. So it's, it's basically like Deer is now ahead in economy, and Rain never capitalized on the fact that he, was, that he had this nexus for so long. And this one group of four stalkers is actually, again, further diminishing this economy. Deer has so many uh, Colossi at his natural. He needs to spread those, though. They're going to be very, very difficult to defend the third base with if they're all stuck up there on the ramp. Meanwhile, more attacks over here doing damage. That Warp Prism is going to be uh, very important as well. We'll see if he can get a Warp in behind the Colossi and really mess it up. For now, he's just going to try to Warp in Zealots in the front. Maybe uh, send them towards the third base and try to get a nice concave. That's exactly oh, what he's doing. He does not want to go down this ramp. Deer does not want to go down this ramp into this concave. Time Warp is on this entire army. Rain way up in army supply right now. This is his chance to win this game. Deer slowly kiting back up the ramp, but he's taking so much damage for it. The Archon's taking immensely here. And here comes that Warp Prism like you were talking about. Yeah, he's looking for that Warp in. At this point, Deer has just lost way, way too much. That position was just too good for Rain. He actually forced him down by sending, you know, just two, three Zealots over to that third base. Yep. And uh, Deer is going to pay for it. It's going to cost him the entire game. Terrible position for those units. Never want to be stuck up in that ramp. Or if you are, you have to give up the third base. You just have to give it up. Yeah, usually you have to get down that ramp first and set up your own concave, not let them into your third base and not sit at the top of your natural ramp because then this is exactly what happens. We've seen it from time to time from uh, some of the you know mid to low level Protosses and uh, fortunately that mistake will cost dear. Oh man, not the Colossus and the Warp Prism. <laughs> GG. <laughs> um, I feel like there were definitely some really big holes in Rain's play. I think harassment-based play is the way to win it versus this guy if you're Deer right now. He did so much damage. Rain definitely looking awkward in certain parts of that mid-game there. Yeah. I would love that. I would have loved to see Deer actually just make a Warp Prism, go with the DT Zealot drops into the main, force Rain into a position where he can't.